I am trying so hard to film this for you guys. Chills was finally helped. <laughs> Look at this dog. He wants our food. This dog's just grilling us right now. <laughs> like hard. <laughs> like so hard right now. He can smell our food. Hi. What up, dude? I'm gonna name you Timothy. Peace out, Timothy. You look like a Timothy. Good morning, men's family. So we pulled up to the Miners Memorial Park and it's a museum. A haunted and, museum. Yeah, it's Sorry. supposedly really haunted. There's this mine inside that's supposedly like super cool. Yeah, you get to actually um, go do a tour of it. It looks pretty nice here. It's cool so far. I like it. We had a really good morning because we were greeted by this dog oh. that was just grilling the crap out of us just right outside of his and then SUV. it was the best part because just before we pulled into here, I got to see a massive St. Bernard, which I don't know if you guys know, but I have a Bernese mountain dog and they're like brother sister type thing, St. Bernard burner. And he was so handsome. Made yeah, my he was day. pretty cute. So we saw two dogs, which is pretty nice. We're animal lovers. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, right now let's actually go in. They're open now, right? Yeah, we didn't come before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Knock 10. on the door and everything. Let's look at the park uh, first though. Whoa. So yeah, I'm really excited. Apparently, I was looking online and apparently like some of the old miners who used to work here give the tours, which is super cool because then you really get like a life experience and a life story of what yeah, happened Yeah, what here. was going down. Apparently, we reached out to them and we are trying to schedule something because the mines are like legitimately haunted. So yeah, so we do have permission to film an investigation here. We won't be doing it like now because we're and super jam packed yeah, this weekend. I think we're gonna try and film this for like the Halloween season That's or September. So we're gonna, good, yeah. yeah. But other than that, it's a pretty nice morning. Not too much going on, and it's kind of like a relaxing morning. We're not doing too much, but kind of thought we would all kind of hang out, check out this. Uh, Museum, what are those? They're little lunch boxes. Are there little boxes. Oh, these are statues. These must have been a memorial for the people who passed away. That's sad. You can feel the energy, like the sadness. Yeah. They were in a healthy place, son. What? A lot of them, like it wasn't a healthy place. It's mining though. A lot of the times, my grandfather was a miner and got lung cancer at 49 years old. My um, best friend's grandfather mined in this mine. In this one? Yeah, he's oh, from no here. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's strong in here. Whoa. Yeah, very strong. A lot of emotion. A lot. I hope we go underground, but I've never gone on the ocean. Whoa. Or climbing. But some people ask us, how can you go underground? So we just made our way into the exhibit. We're just waiting on our tour right now. I don't know if I'm able to film it though. We can, I, I don't see why not. Just as a heads up for you, the mine is only five foot. Yeah, six, I might have to duck. And then it goes down to four feet. So we will yeah. have to So duck. you're good. Um, you don't have to duck. But I'm gonna leave this recording. I'm kidding. I'm not four feet. <laughs> but yeah, I'll leave it recording and see if, uh, you know, that'll help. I probably won't be able to talk that much. Well, the tour we'll is gonna be most people yeah. talking and stuff. I was talking to one of the workers up there, and he said that there are stories here that not a lot of people know. There was a lot of, well, I mean, I'll just let him explain it. But what are these? Oh, cool. Are you okay? No, I'm like feeling so much of their emotions. Like so much of their emotions. Oh yeah, there was an explosion here. Mm -hmm. Pictou County, Nova Scotia. Wow. Oh yeah, that was another mining disaster. Yeah, so there were 26 miners here that passed away in an explosion. I think it was, and it was 13. 13? Yeah, Out I of 26 was, miners? No, I, I think this one... Yeah, killing 26 miners. This is the Pictou County. We're not in Pictou 
the oh. county. There's another one that happened close to my parents' house. That yeah. So I guess he'll just redefine everything. Yeah. Whoa. So this is an oil lamp. The handle of it. Carbide lamps. Wow. So I think the explosion happened in the 70s. I want to say. Like I said, the tour guide is going to redefine everything and tell us exactly what happened. Whoa. Multi shot battery. Used by the shot fire to set blasting caps off, which in return blasted the coal. Whoa. Oh, this is cool. I couldn't imagine working in the mine. I know, me neither. Like, it's just such a different lifestyle, you know? Sorry, I had to cut the cord. I know, I'm, I'm watching you right now. Are you connecting with someone? It's just, I'm just, they're giving me their emotions. That's all they're doing. They're okay. not talking, they're just letting me feel how they feel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'm actually going to go into a simulator. A simulator? And we're going to actually, like, witness the explosion. Damn. It's a pretty cool exhibit. But like Charles said, there's a simulator that will show you guys what the blast looked like. And there's a huge memorial. You guys saw the memorial site out there. Um, that was for them. And it's kind of sad, but at the same time, it's, it's a different lifestyle, right? A lot of these people spent their entire lives in the mines. Wow, look at that, all the helmets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Flame lamps, safety lamps. Electric lamps. Wow. That's crazy. So we just found out that it was in 79 that the explosion happened and we're walking along here and a lot of the stuff that they used you know in the time are here look at that all right so we decided to go last so we can kind of show you guys around mm -hmm. i don't know if we're gonna hear him too well <laughs> whoa this is cool so, it might be a little bit dark. I'm super sorry, guys. But this was life in the coal mines back in the day. There was no light whatsoever. I know. Yeah, you're good. You don't have to go Holy crap. 
That's crazy. As if you're not able to duck in this. <laughs> I'm like bent over so bad right now. And Chelsea just walking normally. <laughs> Vegetation, dead trees, swamp gas, heat moss. If you ever saw Jurassic Park with big trees back in those times, that's where this coal came from. The only fossil you will find in the Cape Breton coal field is a little plant called a fern. We have them up in the museum. We know that the vegetation that this fern comes from is only found on the west coast of Africa. What I'm telling you is, this coal that you're looking at here was absolutely not formed here in Cape Breton. This coal was formed in West Africa 200 million years ago. There's a time in history called Pangaea, when all the continents were together, and when the continents split up, and North America separated from Europe, and we came across the ocean, and this coal came with us. You cannot make that story up. The door, please. <laughs> My boy, but take a 10-year-old boy just before he will work. Again, no electric boy, and this boy is nothing. You sit there on the bench, and this is a father's really? The only lunch you have is a peanut butter and jam sandwich that his mother made last year when he was a little standing there. And I put my lunch and I tucked it over and tucked it. Yeah, that's good. The kid with the head up on here. Another gentleman asked me, why is all this coal left behind? Well, absolutely, you can't take all of the coal that is coal mine. You need something to support the roof. In a real coal mine, if this was working, you wouldn't see these sleepers here at all. And you wouldn't see this, and you wouldn't see this. This is all here for your protection. In a real mine, we use timber. When I get up to the drill, I'll be able to show it to you more. You'll be able to see the timber and the open roof that's underneath that the miners work under. So what you'll be looking at here is one large block of coal running for 20 miles. You take a piece of chalk, you start here, and you mark off 20 feet. You come back, and you go in there 20 feet. Pick, shovel, powder, and tax. You remove that coal. And once you remove that coal, what you've got left is a big empty void. That void is now called a room. You take out your chop, you mark off 30 feet. You do not touch that coal. That coal is called a pillar. You cut her. Well, you need the pillar to support the room. You can't take all of the coal. That's what I'm trying to tell you. you know? So you cut a roll and leave a pillar. You cut a roll and leave a pillar. Safe, effective way of mining. This is how they done it back in those days. So it's safe and effective until you start stealing the pillar's coal. And what I mean by that, your next one is 40 feet, next one is 30 feet. And you're down to 20 feet. And you begin to wonder why is the roof falling in on us and killing us? Because you're stealing the pillar's coal. 
Miners risked life and limb to feed their kids back in those days and took chances and it cost them their lives. Basically the truth. Now another question I normally get when we're down here is where does a miner go when the miner has to go under there? Well, that's disgusting, eh? I know what's on your minds. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, but please don't tell me what a 16-year-old girl told me last year because I'm still traumatized. <laughs> she said, I was told that you use your hats. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. You might get my buddies, but you're not getting mine. <laughs> Nobody's going to call me a shit, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you find what's called an old workings, and there's one right down there behind you, as you can see. All the coal has been removed. Oh, okay. The only reason why you would go down there is you were down there with a shovel, doing a personal business, and now we know the end of the story. <laughs> I am trying so hard to film this for you guys. Joseph's finally out. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the color here? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, no worries. Oh, great. Thank you. Oh, Oh my god. She fell in the mud. Is she okay? She's okay. She's just dirty. She was sinking? She was sinking. Right in there. Holy Alright, so we had to kibosh the tour. I mean we finished it, but it was getting really dark. And now we're scaling down this bunker. I don't know, probably not. Oh, we're halfway there. Should we just continue or? I guess so. I mean we went down the wrong way. Did we? <laughs> you scared me. I'm oh my good. gosh, she's like filled with mud. I'm telling you, she got stuck. My poor child. I'm a horrible mother. Oh my god. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Holy smokes! Yeah, she's clean. There job. you go. Yeah, From you sinking in that hole. You can go in here. <laughs> Whoa! What? Ah, uh -uh, you stay. How deep is it? I don't know. I didn't go fully in it. Oh yeah, it kind of just goes around. Yeah. Cool. Pretty cool though. So I will tell you guys one thing about the tour guide who actually told us about the 1979 explosion and he missed it by this much. So basically what happened was he went to work. One guy that he worked with totally just left his shift, kiboshed it. I mean, and wasn't it because he, the day before his shift, he worked really, really hard? No, no, no. It's because someone left their shift. So we had to cover for someone else and oh, wow. do like all of this work. And then he couldn't move the next day and was curled up in his bed and whatever and that was the day the explosion happened so he basically he missed, missed it because someone was watching. yeah it was a real guy who worked there back in 79 uh he's been there for 30 years or since the 60s or something like that and he retired in 99 some old guy but he had quite the career in the coal mining industry it's super fascinating to hear like i have this bigger respect for all the miners now my grandfather was a miner and it's just crazy. He left with lung cancer and hearing aids and he was 70 when I was born. Like super old and super out of shape and, cool. but uh, yeah. I think it just goes in a circle. I did, I walked in. <laughs> I really cool yeah. I mean, we've had quite the busy day so far. That was a pretty long tour. It was a long tour. And, like we were just so hunched over. I just couldn't film. I mean, I too wasn't. Much. You were, yeah, you were good. You were walking straight with that little boy that I was walking to. <laughs> um, Me and the 12 year old were the same yeah. height. <laughs> it was super cool, of course. I wanted to film it for you guys, but it was too dark and a lot of people and whatnot. But good news is that we do have the opportunity to investigate that. And although it was a replica of the mine back in the day, Charles picked up a few things and they do experience ghostly activity there, which is interesting because like, you would never expect it to. We would, what do you because 
like to someone who doesn't do paranormal stuff, no one would ever question that, right? But to us, Charles picked up a few things like instantly. Yeah, literally instantly. What were you experiencing though? Like you said you saw two people. So you saw two men, right? Yeah, with their head caps on. Really? Yeah, one of them was just like walking down. He didn't notice me. He just like walked down the tunnel when everyone was kind of gone and I noticed him around the corner. So then I went to go peek and he was gone. And then the second time it was happening was I heard a noise and I heard like a, like a little whistle. So okay. then I turned around and I just saw one of the other miners who was like behind like the corner and he just kind of like peeked out at me yeah. and then smiled. So wow. yeah, it was really cool. But as soon as I got there, like I mentioned earlier, like it was a rush of their emotions. Like I could feel the sadness of the area, but it didn't seem like the miners underground that I saw were too like upset of being there. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I'm really excited to investigate it now that I've seen it. I've been there. I felt the energy. And like we know yeah 100 we know yeah and there's items there from like the world wars yeah and from people who have passed away so anywho we pulled up to this battle fort it's a national park but way back in the day what was it world war one or I two know. i have to reread some of the signs here yeah but i know that they this is like a, a fully fortified base and they built it to there's, look like a church yeah. yeah so we're kind of digging deeper into history today um, Chels found it. It's a super dope spot with some bunkers you can access. Yeah. Whew. But it seems to be that they blocked a lot of it off. I mean, you can technically get in there. You just have to go from above, right? Oh, it's the same thing, right? Same thing. Yeah. But like they left. I wonder though, like what it looks like. Hey, that's, deep, huh? that's also really disgusting water. Oh my gosh. Can you go in the window here? Yeah, you can. Oh, I just gotta push it open, eh? You're crazy, Kia. You're crazy. Awesome. Wow. Let's see if we can go into the museum. No, Kia. I don't trust staying here. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. I you here and I'm not risking it. Yeah. So that's what we're doing today. We're just kind of kicking it here. Thanks again for joining us on another vlog, hanging out with us on a different day. Oh. <sighs> I just find it so fascinating how there's so much history oh, here history. with the wars, the coal mining here in Cape Red, and the coal mining was super big. And back in the day, I didn't know this, but the guy who was doing our tour said that they needed miners from like Scotland, England, from all over the world to come here because the coal mining business was so big. So you had immigrants from like all these different countries Yo, and everything. And what? There's tunnels. Where? Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. That's cool. These are all tunnels. Yeah. So under us right now, there's probably a huge system. Okay. How do I get in? Well, you just cut the bolts. No. With bolt cutters. Akia, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to explore some haunted bunkers? Yeah. Wow. That's incredible, though. Did it get shot at? I don't know. Kind of looks like it did. I mean, it's pretty old, so it's not in the best of conditions. Yeah, so it's called Fort Petrie Museum. Apparently, it is open. Entry by the... Is there any cash on us? No, but I have... I have card. I don't think they'll take card either. Oh, well. That's alright. I've just never seen anything like that. Like, it does look like a church from afar. Yeah, it does. Oh my god. Look at that masterpiece, babe. Woo. Isn't she just gorgeous? It's absolutely stunning. Jeez. So you're saying that's been abandoned for how long? I don't know, for a really long time. But they are oh. trying to restore it. Only thing is I don't know if it's like too far gone. Is that from like the 1600s? I don't know. We have <laughs> So I'm like the second day Earth was created. Literally. Oh my gosh. I wonder what it looks like on the inside. Damn. Yo, what's good, Key? My God, did you hear that? Some like kid dying of torture somewhere. Yo, Key, you hear that too, huh? Where's that key coming from? Was that you yelling? Yeah. Some kid getting like... No, it was me, man. I got scared by a pigeon. 
<laughs> yeah, that was you. You yeah. ran all the way over there yeah. to just scream like someone was chopping off your head. How did you uh, do with the photos? Not so well. No? It's tricky. We literally came all the way to Cape Breton so you can take photos of this abandoned house and it's you didn't get any? It's not abandoned Eddie? anymore. No, I know. But it's it's technically abandoned. Technically, I don't think anyone lives in it right now. I mean, they're doing renos on it, clearly. Yeah. I mean, who knows? They might have given up on renos. Why don't you go and try and get in? No. I'm kidding. Don't do that. The windows are new. Um, It's kind of like a misleading house, though, because... The front of it looks really Victorian style, right? Like really old, but the whole siding is like it looks New like a and modern. modern. Yeah, I noticed that on the way up. It kind of. I don't like, know why they do that. Bit, like if you honest. have. Yeah, see the top. They're like redoing it with like new siding. Like I, I think that like I think like, that top of the house is new. That's what I mean. Like the let's, top of it right there. Let's go on maps. They're trying. Like by the looks of it, they're trying to, or they're probably gonna do the whole siding of it. I really hope like that. that. They, like, they won't like people that are buying these houses now aren't doing that Can so I, I highly they're gonna turn out to be like that these are all probably these old all, yeah you know 1900 okay, houses, so but. let's see on google maps no way eh? they're redoing they're it up yeah i know they're ruining this house a thousand percent because if you look so i'm not going to show the address but if you look, the top of the house wasn't that new. Sh it was the same shingle as this, same as the side. They're completely stripping it and replacing it with ugly siding. Yeah. Like I get it, the <laughs> shingles are probably way long gone on the side and it's like all new siding. Like, it, why? Like, I'm sorry if, if you're into the modern stuff, like I'm not gonna judge you for it, but why buy this house and then start to strip it and turn it into a modern house. Yeah. You know, you can't buy an old Victorian See, home. Here's where I stand with this, okay? If you buy a Victorian home, especially like that. a super Victorian for what it looks like, a super Victorian where, I mean like the house definitely needs a style of its originality. You know what I mean? Like it needs its original look. Yeah. If you buy a house like that, it needs to be- Original. You know, this, it it's an unwritten rule. A lot of people like to modernize their homes. That's fine. But come on, like you got to have a little bit of taste. You can't buy an old house. That's why you buy a modern house to redo with modern stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now that should be that's a, just me. Personally. Honestly, like I think that should be a rule. If you're going to buy be. a house from a certain age, you are not allowed to modernize it. If you are going to buy a house, for example, just my buy parents, a modern home for example, if you're modernize my parents' it. house is 1912. Okay, anything in the early 1900s or 1800s or earlier than that, you should not be allowed to touch in that sense. You should be able to renovate it, but you have to restore it. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I could I mean, be wrong. Yeah. Goodbye, you ruined the house. It's all right. I mean, it's their house yeah. at this point, but I mean, we don't say that because we want to, you know, shut anybody down. We know a lot of people do this stuff, but it's just like, it should be like, if you're going to modernize something, modernize a modern home. Yeah. Or if you're going to redo a historic house, redo it in a historic way with like, not necessarily historic things. Like you can't really get cupboards and all that stuff. No, no. You but just I, like in the style, you know what I mean? Like the style yeah. has to represent it. That's just me personally. I just mean though that like, there aren't a lot of historic properties left or there aren't a lot of houses that are Victorian and are, are like, they're not built like that anymore, right? Yeah. So how I see it is like, there's only so many left. We should really try to preserve them. Oh yeah. Instead of always turning it into a new modern house. Yeah, 100%. That's just how we see yeah. it. I mean, we're big history buffs and we love that type At of stuff. At least it's being fixed up and not demolished. That would be, yes. that's just like, the worst of the worst. I just hope they keep the turret. Yeah. So. All right. Anywho, we are probably gonna head out. We have um, one more place we're gonna stop by and I'll probably do another vlog. Lots has happened today and we do have some filming tonight and you guys will see what happened in our previous video. It might actually be out already on the main channel, I don't know. But, um, oh, something's in my throat. But uh, yeah, keep it on the main channel. I know I haven't been posting the past few days, but we're still here in Cape Breton. So honestly, we still have so much to explore and we'll do as much as we can. So we'll try to show you guys as much as we can without like 
without it being like a four hour video. So yeah, we're gonna end this off here. Thanks again for hanging out with us mm -hmm. on another pleasure. video. This is our um, this is our daily vlog channel. So what we do on this channel is everything that insists of the paranormal, our daily life, behind the scenes stuff at certain locations, gaming, uh, fun stuff, just our traveling and all that stuff. So if you guys are new, this is what happens on this channel. Um, yeah, that was good. Yeah. You're also driving you. on the wrong side of the road. I'm still parked. Mm. I'm parked now. Do you actually think we're in Sydney, Australia, eh? Because you're driving on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, I'm just straight up just driving on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. 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 Anyways, we're going to head out. Thanks again for tuning into this video. We love you guys so much. And like I say in every vlog, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.